Hey there, I'm Dave, also known as the Notion Coach, and in this video, we're taking a deep dive on habit tracking in Notion, how it works. There's a template that we're gonna be using that's free. You can download it in the link below, but I do wanna go into a few ways that you can customize the template to really make it your own and make sure that the habit tracker reflects what's highest priority for you in terms of what you're trying to get better at, what you're trying to improve on, and any habits you're trying to undo as well. So let's dive in. One quick note, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe to stay up to date with Notion tips and new releases, updates, new features that come to Notion. There's been a lot over the past couple of months. And there's also going to be a habits workshop that's gonna be coming as a result of this template. So if you wanna stay up to date on that, there's gonna be a link below as well to sign up and get notified first when that launches and also get that pre-order launch price. If you're using the link below, this is what you'll see when you download the habit tracker. So there's gonna be a quick intro as well as this video so you could kind of like deep dive and customize the template. But we're gonna open this in here and this is what you'll see. So we're gonna duplicate this and personalize it in this video. But before we duplicate it, you'll see here, there's a couple sections. So there's a today view. This is a quick space to easily track your habits using simple checkboxes. There's the days view, which is looking at the current week. It's automatically filtered, so it updates every week automatically. And the last section is the current week, month, and quarter. So this is giving a snapshot as to where you are in terms of the habits that you're tracking across these different timelines to give you a better idea of where you're doing well and where you might need to prioritize going into the next days or weeks. This last space, this is the quote unquote systems space. So this is where your dashboards live and databases. Quick note on the two. Dashboards are focused views to make sure that when you have say a week's dashboard, it's only showing the information that's most important to that particular space. So in that week's dashboard, for instance, which we'll get to, you really wanna see how you're performing week over week versus months or quarters. Databases, which are a little bit different, we wanna think about these as the original spaces that where we can see all of the properties that we're tracking for each database, where we have relations set up. So it's almost like a record kind of behind the scenes view of each of these databases but we don't wanna be in this space on a daily basis. This is more so for going in and if you wanna make changes to habits that you're tracking or how you've set up relations, you wanna do that in the databases view instead of the dashboard view. So distinction that has been helpful working with coaching clients and companies to make sure that we never get overwhelmed with opening up a database and seeing hundreds of pages and tens of different properties and really not knowing what to do from there. So. Quick distinction that I wanted to make before we jump in, but what we're gonna do is click on the duplicate button. If you're not logged in, this will ask you to log in using your Notion account. And what this is gonna do is duplicate this template and make a copy in your Notion workspace. So we are going to open this up and you'll see here, this is now part of our workspace. Now that we've got our template duplicated, we're going to make some customizations into what we're trying to track in terms of adding habits, customizing the names of each habit so it's easier to recognize versus habit one, two, and three, and also some visual changes that you might wanna make from the template to kind of make it your own. So very first thing you'll notice that the template is set up using toggles. This is really has been a strategy that has been helpful for users that, you know, struggle with overwhelm or need help focusing. And the toggle just allows to open up one part of your dashboard or workspace and only focus in on that information. This could get overwhelming considering the amount of data that you're looking at with how you're doing on habits for the week, for the month, for the quarter, for you know days of the week, things like that. So toggles are meant to do that, but if you want wanted to just you know delete the toggle altogether, you still retain the the formatting of the page. So something to consider, but we'll keep those toggles on for now. So you'll notice that we've got habit one, two, and three. This is the naming across the template, but we wanna customize this. So what I'm gonna do first is, again, anything that you're customizing on a structural level, we wanna do in the systems space. So I'm gonna collapse these for now, and we're going to open up systems. And again, we've ha we have dashboards and databases. Considering we're making some structural changes, we wanna go into the databases space. And primarily the days view. So if you'll notice, this is 
again, everything all at once. So you've got days that are all the way through the end of 2023. There's a link to auto populate this. I'll try to look for that and add it into the description below as well. And then you'll notice here we've got habit one, two, and three. And this is where we want to change the naming. You could also open any one of these day, these day pages and change it here as well. Opening a day just shows you all of the properties that are set up for the database. This can also get overwhelming. We've got formulas to tell us what day of the week it is. We've got a formula telling us if a day is in the current week and that checkbox. This is used for filtering so that we don't have to automatically create new views on week for each week or for each month, quarter, that type of thing. So let's change the naming here and then we're gonna look at where we want to update the naming elsewhere in the workspace. So let's say for this example, the first habit we wanna have is morning journal. So we'll call this AM journal, just so that it you know is more compact. And that's gonna be our first habit. The second habit's gonna be meditation. And the third habit's going to be, let's say, exercise. So we've got these three, AM journal, meditation, and exercise. Now you'll notice that if we close that view out, this is updated here as well. So just to make this more legible, let's change the sizing of these so that we wanna update these elsewhere, we can do that. We've got these here, but we have other roll-ups and relations set up so that you can see your progress on those different timelines. So we do wanna update the naming in a few other spots. So let's go into back into the habits homepage. We're gonna go into weeks and here we've got the week number followed by the day. This is kind of like the naming so that it's prettier in the homepage, but we'll kind of skip that for now. But where I want to focus in on is this space. So you've got two rollups in this week's database that are doing slightly different things. So the first rollup for habit one, this is just showing simple checkboxes. How many times did you achieve that habit over the course of the week and there's a percentage with notions new progress bar so this is set up to show kind of more on a visual level how you performed for that week but we want to make those changes to the names so that they're reflected in our dashboard so first one we had was am journal and or journaling we'll copy that and paste that in here followed by a percentage symbol and you can't have two properties with the same name, so it won't let you if you try to. Second one we had was meditation. So now when we look at that week's view, this will be updated, but let's go ahead and do that for months and quarters really quickly. And then we're gonna make one more change to the templates for each of these. So we'll get into what that looks like. So we got, we've got it updated on weeks. Let's go to months, do the same thing here. We, if we open up any month, we see here, these are the only ones that are visible. But if you wanted to expand these, you'll see you've got the days that are related, some other formulas, some titles for that gallery view. But let's focus in on changing the name of the habit first. So we'll, again, go in here, call this AM journaling. So we've got AM journaling. Let's do next one, meditation. And then the last habit we have is exercise and get that. All right, let's do the same thing quickly for quarters. So go into here. We've got, again, quarters are also populated through the end of 2023. Let's go into quarter. Any one of these quarters will do, it'll update automatically here. So let's go into AM journaling. And exercise. All right, you'll notice there's some text properties here that are hidden by default for a reason. So these are essentially labels for our habits dashboard. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we've got our habits set up. If you decide in the future that you want to track um, additional habits or you want to kind of sunset or archive previous habits, there's a way to do that too. We'll get into that in the habits workshop, but let's go into, let's open up these views and see how these have been updated too. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got our three habits that we're tracking, but you'll notice because it's a little bit longer, let's just kind of make this a bigger so we can read it. 
And also, if you wanted to, you know, add a, let's say, emoji for this one, so that it's also even easier to kind of follow, you can do that too. All right, so we've customized that. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And it's an option, just an idea. Don't have to do that if you think it's a little extra. So we've got our, this is the space to open up. It's automatically filtered to today. So this will update at you know the beginning of each day automatically but let's say you're in the middle of the week and you forgot to track your habits from you know sunday or monday this next space called days is where we would kind of go back into previous days of the week you'll see here this is also formatted to the current week that formula that we looked at earlier is checked so this is only this week and this is just an additional filter just to make sure that we're not pulling in additional or day pages You'll also notice in the days view, if you go to the drop down to create a new page, there's templates set up already for days of the week. So if we were to create a new page, if it's Sunday, if you click on Sunday, it will give us you know, that cover image. So it's just kind of a little bit of extra visual cue to see how you're doing across specific days. And you'll notice those updates we made to the name of the property show up here as well. So again, Big part of customizing this this template is renaming the habits and make sure that we know what we're tracking rather than remembering what was habit one, habit two, habit three. But we do want to make some changes in these views, which are the week view, month, and quarter. So let's say we're making our way through the week. I'm just going to check some of these to see how this changes the later views. Let's see that there. So if you notice, if we go into the week, month, and quarter, these values have been updated, but this still has the habit one, two, and three naming. So we would wanna make an update there as well. If we go into each of these databases, what I want to do is go into the template for the week. This is what we're gonna be using and setting as a default so that we're bringing in this information automatically. And if we click edit, let's open this full screen. Let's go into these text properties because this is where we're updating the naming of our habits. So the first one we have AM journaling. Second one we had was meditation. Third one we had was exercise. So updating this in the database template means that we don't have to add this in automatically. So now if I want to update the names of those habits, what I can do is go into this current week, scroll down and click on the week template. And what that's going to do is bring in these naming conventions so that when I close this and go back into the dashboard, now I've got those names set up in this gallery view so that I know how I'm doing each versus that habit one, two, three. So what we want to do is update the template for month and quarter. This is also really good practice if you're new to Notion and exploring databases and database templates, kind of a way to get started so rather than starting from zero. So let's do that for the month and quarter um, templates as well and exercise. And that's going to give us the updated names of those habits. So one more time, exercise. Spell it right this time. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Exercise. Cool. And close the template. So I'm going to delete these and apply that new quarter template so that we've got our naming here. And they'll also show up in this view. So as we get through weeks, months, and quarters, these data points are gonna be increasingly more valuable just to see how you're doing across habits and going into each new week, for example, prioritizing some of those habits and maybe time blocking parts of the day to make sure that those habits get completed. Or if you're tracking sort of unhabits or habits that you're trying to decrease the frequency of, like you know time off of social media or time off of your phone. So you can do those and track those as well. And having those visual cues, especially with these new progress bars, allows you to kind of celebrate the wins of where you're improving across habits. And if you had a long streak and then kind of fell off a little bit, it also gives you that immediate visual feedback to say, okay, it's been a couple of days since I achieved that, that habit. How do I strategize to make sure that, you know, plan that out and 
can make sure that these habits stick and that they're consistent. So that's essentially it for customizing this template. One word of caution, three has been kind of the magic number with, especially if we're implementing any new habit track solution, just to make sure that it's not overwhelming and we could really focus in on a small number of habits that, that are highest priority. And once we feel confident about those habits, we always have the option of expanding or maybe not even having to track those habits anymore after a while and switching gears to new habits or new things that are that are higher priority. So let me know what you think. The link to download this is in the description. It's free. There's a workshop and course component coming soon that's gonna be using this and diving a little bit deeper into habit tracking, some common mistakes that we wanna avoid and some best practices so that the habits that we're, that we're tracking are consistent and we can kind of hit those targets long-term and also how habits play into this, the goals that we set. So very excited about that mini workshop that's coming up. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about the, the template. Let me know if you have any questions or you know curiosities about how it, how it works. I'd love to hear it. Just add a comment below. And otherwise, hope that's helpful and see you in the next video.